time out of your busy schedules to join us for today's session. Uh, my name is Tom Leibach and I'm an Alliance Manager for CUNA Strategic Services up here in Madison, Wisconsin. And I'm privileged to be part of the team that works with Passageways on the products uh, they have developed for the credit union market. Our presenter for this afternoon, Matt Maxwell, is the Director of Business Development for Passageways. This afternoon's session, How to Set Expectations and Onboard Your Millennial Workforce, will be part two of a four-part series that will take place over the coming months. Today, Matt will share how to successfully assimilate young people into your credit union while avoiding the pain points. I'll now hand you off to Matt to begin this presentation. Excellent. Thank you, Tom, and thank you, everybody, for joining today. It's always just a, a privilege to be able to have um, leverage this partnership with Kenya Strategic Services. Um, I've been with Passageways here for almost six years, and I can tell you it, one of my first days was getting to meet the team from Kenya Strategic Services as we became a, uh, a member here. And uh, just great to see the insight and uh, continued education they provide uh, to the, the credit union movement. So uh, we do appreciate the honor, and especially you all taking some time out of your busy day. Uh, to chat with us today, we had a pretty pretty high uh, record, near record uh, even, uh, signups for today. So we're probably going to get people jumping in and going, but really excited to be able to share a little bit of our passion here at Passageways uh, when it comes to millennials. Um, myself, uh, my, name, my name is Matt Maxwell. I'm the Director of Business Development, as Tom mentioned. Um, I have been working in the in the space with our credit union uh, partners for the past six years, uh, and my passions include working with students at Purdue University, even down to the high school level on business plans and critiquing. Um, I've spent a uh, better part of 20 years going through uh, hiring, vetting, firing millennials specifically, even at a young age, uh, a core part of, of my upbringing. So. Uh, really, really passionate and, and believe strongly in this movement. So to set expectations for today, uh, again, as Tom mentioned, this is part two of our four-part series. Uh, those of you that missed part one really identified who are millennials, what do they look like, uh, where do they spend their time, uh, and most importantly, how do we recruit them uh, in this process that, that is very, very vital, especially to our growing uh, population and we'll review some of those stats, but I encourage you to go back, visit CUNY Strategic Services, and we can get you the slides and even the, the recording. Um, I won't spend too much time on it today. And then for today's discussion, we're going to go specifically into what do a millennial, uh, millennials expect, right? There's certain expectations they have, there's expectations we have, and there's aligning the two visions to make sure, ultimately, are we on the same page? So for today's discussion, let's really get into... Um, the nuts and bolts. So millennials today occupy about 53% or so of the total workforce. So they are, have overtaken baby boomers, overtaken Generation Xers even, um, and continue to trend in that way and the, the upwards uh, realm. What this means is a pivotal point in business where there are more of them than us. And by them, I mean me. Uh, I am actually in the millennial uh, line, line here. Uh, from a, uh, an age perspective, fought it for many years. Um, but what you can see is there's, a, there's really that tipping point on what's happening. That being said, who are they? Who are we? 18 to 35-year-olds, half the, half the workforce, and uh, really account for a lot of the buying power and uh, what it looks like just in metrics here for you. We covered these in detail in the previous examples. Um, and my, my, I myself have had that identity crisis of wanting to be a Generation Xer, being the oldest of four, uh, and, but really ultimately finding out, you know, I am a millennial. What does that mean? What are some of the traits? And uh, some of this information resonated with me. This is personal experience as well as industry experience and some of our research uh, providing you the best information today. So what are some of those traits? Well, they are... Uh, attention deficit, squirrely, right? Squirrel mentality. We've all seen the movie and there's a squirrel. You know, it's a, just a great, great component. Identifies to many of our, our generation. Um, seem entitled, open-minded, creative, empowered, desensitized, and call you by your first name. We'll go through some of these in detail um, when it comes to setting expectations today. And, of course, in our first webinar, I talked about each one of these in great length. So, again, make sure uh, you go back and uh, check those out as we get going, okay? 
Um, oh, let me got a question here, which is my slides are not moving. So I'm going to back up and flip those on so you can see them. Had my screen pause. Thank you very much. Got it. Excellent. There we go. So you should be able to see this. So this is the, the tipping point I was talking about. All right. So you should be able to see this screen. And where we've all gone, and to catch you up, this is right where we are sitting, is who are millennials? What do they look like? Um, some of the stats required behind them um, from there, these are very pivotal. Okay. So um, make sure that, uh, you know, we'll send you these slides as well. Um, be able to get you this information as we go. But of course, we are a big part of the workforce as we move forward. Okay, that being said, here are some of those traits we were talking about. What, what do we look like? What are some of the pieces, um, whether positive or negative traits, or perceived, I should say, uh, as we get into the discussions. And uh, ultimately, we can focus some of this information to align with our corporate goals and values as an organization. So here's some new content for you. Um, regarding how millennials describe themselves on the left and ultimately how HR and many of us uh, view millennials on, on the right. Um, being that, you know, 65% uh, of, of millennials believe they are people savvy, a little bit on the tech side, um, very, very loyal to their employers and fun-loving, hardworking, all perceived, right? Well, even when I say some of those traits, uh, I probably got some raised eyebrows. There, so off to the right, how, how do you perceive them? Uh, mostly tech savvy, uh, fun loving, and a little bit of hard work. All right, so the, ultimately, why is this important? Well, if we don't have aligned um, perceptions, then ultimately we have uh, a disruption there that needs to address at some point. Now, obviously, changing a whole generation and, and teaching them our way is the only way uh, is probably a losing battle, and you may or may not be in business in a number of years from now uh, or in the same role. So we have to change and adapt to this. So what are millennials looking for? This is the, the big piece. So as we start to bring them in, there's a certain expectation they have when it comes to jobs, roles, uh, and things of that nature. So right here we've got a little bit as to who, what type of organization, Millennials believe in. Uh, they really are, are firm believers in giving back, community engagement. Great for the uh, the, the um, member interactions as well as our, our corporate missions as as credit unions. Um, definitely a great great alignment there. Um, and then being able to go through and say, you know, they want to be able to be creative, uh, and, and millennials want me time. So what I talked about this in great length last webinar about where they spend their time, what they want to do, but ultimately. They want to feel a part, meaning they want to contribute, not quite sure how to do it, uh, and ultimately they have this thing called work-life balance. Now we ultimately know that that doesn't exist. What this means to a millennial now is they are passionate about what they do, and when they are passionate, they tend to work extra hard, do go the extra mile, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But it's setting a different expectation as opposed to it being assumed that you're going to work 60, 70, 80 hours, depending on roles. We've all been there. Certain stress times, end of the month, end of the quarter, going into planning, um, nights and weekends, right? We've all been there uh, and, and gone through. So those are some, some keys to it. So let's take a look at what traditional interviewing looks like. Because, again, first is setting expectations, and that really becomes in with interviewing. Because we're setting the pace as the, the staff come in. I can tell you here at Passageways, um, whether an employee makes it or not, they are extremely excited about what we're doing as a company and most times are, are making sure we are the last call um, from that side and it's all due to expectations uh, and you can do this even in organizations, okay? Um, so we're, we're tackled those. Um, the other components are just going through and saying, you know, why should I hire you? How would you describe yourself? Why are you good enough to work for me? Um, what goals uh, are related to your occupation have you established for yourself in the next 10 years? Well, let's be honest. How many millennials are going to be able to answer this, whether they're fresh out of, uh, out of college, out of high school, and some of our branches are in local high schools, right? Even starting to work with Generation Z uh, here. Really, really, really big change. And ultimately, we have a disconnect between um, those individuals and our expectations. So as we look at the next set of questions, think about the range in time 
Um, so there's the lifespan of a employee. Uh, are they coming to work for us for two years, five years, ten years? Think about those components, right? We're starting to see a paradigm shift. Um, but ultimately, uh, how do you work under pressure? What are the most important rewards you expect in your career? It's an underlying tone, right? And, and a millennial picks up on those pieces because, again, we're desensitized. We get right to it. We're, we're specifically looking for a way it'll get back. And why is that? Well, we have different goals. As you can see from this, uh, these survey results, uh, most millennials are only expecting to work for an organization from one to five years, the vast majority. And most of those within the two to five year gap, I bet if you broke it down to two to three years, that's probably the, the longest span most of them are uh, willing to go in. Okay, so um, this is important because we're not setting expectations in interviewing where do you want to be in 10 years because 10 years, they probably, to be completely honest, if they've mapped out their career path, they're going to work for you for two years, they're going to shift or change roles, and then they're going to go somewhere else, get to somewhere else, and then before you know it, um, they're working in uh, overseas for a nonprofit. That may be their end game. It's very different expectations as opposed to, you know, the, the ladder of hierarchy and how do we, we go through on that front, okay? So um, very different. Now, as we think about who these companies look up to in the past, Generation Xers and Baby Boomers and others had companies they looked up to, Nike and others. Um, you know, Nike's still on the list, but not nearly as high as they used to be. Uh, Generation Xers were thinking about, um, uh, or, or Baby Boomers were thinking about Ford and Chrysler and all these companies where that was the, the primo job. Look at Detroit now, right? Very different scene. So there's a, a different perception. If you see here, we've got Disney, we've got Google, we've got all these type places. And why is this important? Well, we're talking about um, the, a different generation and how they, they go through. So one of the first takeaways I want to provide you are thinking outside the box and approach on how you're going to tackle uh, screening and interactions. Um, there are many tools out there. Um, one of them we use here at Passageways is called IntelHire to be able to go through and screen candidates for them to automatically, at the exact moment they're thinking, thinking, don't even have a resume, thinking about potentially applying, they can go through a simple questionnaire, uh, and it will go through and force rank candidates, um, ultimately filtering through the people and giving you a score based on what you're actually looking for. Are they a people person? Are they engaging? Are they from the community? You know, all those type questions, you can weight them differently. And the reason I ultimately bring up this example is you have to think outside the box. Uh, it's a different expectation. They're not wanting, you know, an interview call and side-by-side -side with resumes, if they even have a resume, uh, which may or may not contain um, several things where they've just worked for nonprofits or they volunteered at, um, you know, they were a lifeguard and things of that nature. I, I'm telling you this again firsthand. I know you've seen it as well. Uh, it's a different paradigm. So we have to change the way we interact from the second they hit our website and think about going through um, an interview process, ultimately to how do we treat them when they do get in the door. So say we filter them down, we've got our top candidates, uh, and we're going through and having conversations with them. This is what we're looking, right? uh, looking like today, very different from the past, right? We've got people who dress very different. We've got different styles and expectations. And ultimately, we can take those same type questions we had previously and spin them a little bit different in the sense that uh, what have you done in the past that will help you with this job as opposed to tell me uh, an example and, and things of that nature. So we're pulling from a different tone. Um, have you ever had to wear a uniform that covered up a tattoo? You know, calling it right on the spot. I know several credit unions who allow tattoos to be sewn. Others, uh, depending on the scene, you know, may need to be covered up. Uh, have you ever been passed up for an award or promotion that you thought you were going to get? It, get? How did you react? Um, those are the type of things. And what we're looking for out of these tones are very different answers. We're looking for a person fit. I'm not looking for a cookie cutter. Um, here at Passageways, we have the same process regardless of the role. We're looking for a person fit. You may not be the most qualified. However, uh, if you fit our culture and where we're going, because uh, there's two different types of culture, those of you that uh, may not have been some of our latest webinars, um, 
you've got the, the culture today and then the future culture, where we're going to. And ultimately, we're trending in very different directions uh, a lot of times, trying to maintain a culture that may be changing ultimately, going more social and, and engaging, community-focused, um, even from that side. Uh, internally, how do we react to that? Uh, how do you like to receive feedback? Right? Some of those type of notes, because we're trying to find a good fit, so ultimately they can be successful um, through this. And these are, again, some of the great takeaways. I'm going to have some more for you in a bit. But I want to give you something that you can apply today. Uh, think about those questions um, and some of the standardized responses you can get. Um, another good one that I personally like is, what is a good day in the office? How do you want to spend your time? Where are you? Uh, are you standing? Are you sitting? Are you moving? Are you talking to people in person? Do you need to? Ha are you okay having phone conversations? Because each role is very different, right? For managing call center um, versus talking to people up front, it's a very different skill set. Uh, in passageways, I, I can tell you, I have teams uh, who specialize in just each one of those roles as we go, and we're trying to find that right peg for the right hole there. Um, so uh, other components, and these are underlying. Uh, what, what do you read or listen to in the news per day? Are you listening to sports such as Mike and Mike? Do you follow uh, New York Times? Are you reading things on your phone? Um, ultimately, trying to find are they in touch? And then ask it up front. What do you want to accomplish with this job? What are your goals? Uh, and that's that okay for them to say, I'm, I'm looking for three years, you know, two, three years. I want to get through school and see from there. I'm not entirely sure. I've thought about going uh, and uh, backpacking through Europe or, you know, completely going to uh, Haiti to work with nonprofit organizations. I, I see many different things. Some, some teams uh, and millennials will come in and say they have hobbies. They want to turn into full-time jobs and, and things of that nature. So um, there's a lot that you can do just by asking in a very different tone because we're looking for a personal personal experience with that individual from the day there. Not when we get all through all of our candidates and, oh, my gosh, that, that one person I didn't treat the nicest, um, you know, is, is our best candidate. It, it would give them the same type of treatment. We're trying to find who, who is the, the, the right fit from there. Um, ultimately, you got to dig deeper. We're looking for a motivational fit, work ethic, um, checking on references. Do they have references? And then nowadays, of course, we can find everything on social media. Um, my wife and I have uh, continued to have uh, do business on the side in apartments and rentals and things of that nature. And you'd be amazed what you can find about each individual uh, online, posted publicly, what they're like, motivated. Are they positive? Are they positive? Are they negative? Um, who are their friends? What type of things are they sharing? You know, all those type of things give you a better sense of who they are and a motivational fit uh, from there. And then uh, ultimately, we want to deliver uh, stellar coaching. That is a huge component here at Passageways. Uh, we, we've been um, really focused on trying to coach and not trying focusing on coaching. So we give our staff every opportunity in the world uh, to be successful as they get running. Well, congratulations for all of you. Uh, you have got the job. Welcome to all that experience, all the work we just did. It's just making sure we're a good fit. And then there's this whole, oh, my goodness gracious, we've got the first day jitters coming up, right? There's a lot of things, whether I need to pack a lunch, um, you know, do I need to bring my, my Sun Drive or access to my OneDrive or Google Drive, you know, all those type of things. There's a lot of pieces they have access to. Uh, and setting up for those days. So I want to give you a few tips to setting up expectations from your side and things we could try different. And these are they're very, very simple. But again, some great takeaways. And if I'm going a bit fast, I apologize. But I want to make sure we get through the content for you uh, in a timely manner and share the slides after the fact here. Okay. So the first one, and I love this, make the first day so exciting they can't wait to return. Um, this is huge. Uh, you, you will turn these... Again, if we filter through the right candidates, we've got the motivational fit and culture fit, um, you get them excited, you will get the roommates excited. That's the, the next part is um, as they're the couch surfing and finding, you know, same with family and friends, you will get people of like minds uh, in the same place uh, there. And it's a great way to set up expectations for the, uh, for the future. And uh, especially here at Passageways, we give brand new staff the ability to make an impact on day one. 
Um, so being able to plug them into a project or a, a thought or give them something where like, oh, I, I, have you thought about trying this? Um, those questions come up. We plug them right into that cross-functional team so they can be able to um, get in and comp you know feel that they have some skin in the game right off the bat. And this can be applied for any organization, regardless whether we're you know, a big credit union, a small credit union, we can plug them in to, rather than assimilating them into the machine, if that makes sense. Okay. So again, millennials are interactive. Um, they want to be putting their hands on everything, moving at the speed of light, uh, and ultimately, you want them to be um, pulled in in the same manner. So if orientation uh, needs to be quicker and we get them through, uh, more interactive as opposed to just take a test or things here at Passageways. With every part of training, they have, uh, for hour, every hour of training, they have an hour of knowledge check. This could be writing a Word document. This could be throwing together some slides. And it's less for review and, you know, structure, and it's more for getting them thinking about some of the business practices we need today. Um, and how they're going to be expected, you know, here in, in the role to be. But it's those, those subliminal um, changes you're able to make right there and little changes to guide them. Um, a great one that I, I found is, even for us, has been pretty key is don't start on a Monday. Um, so if we start them on a Tuesday or a Wednesday and we get them in at 10 o'clock, ultimately they're going to have a shorter day as opposed to being worn out, right? So if you're not used to eight hours of work, um, even six hours, that's a lot to take in. So let's set them up for success so they have that excitement and it continues on through orientation. Um, so we make it fun and interactive and you're starting to see that trend. Um, and this is, this is great for them to be able to, to go through and have some of those expectations. Um, now, before we even get them in the door, there's a few things you can do and I recommend this highly. Um, I will send text messages, I will email them or, you know, say, hey, I'm really looking forward to seeing you on Monday, hope you have a great weekend, or hope I, we see you on Tuesday. All those type pieces, take the extra step, um, give them some business cards, make sure the computer is set up, their desk is there. I'll even sit down in the chair and make sure, okay, is it kind of fit, they're a little bit taller than me, try and get it there, their mouse is working, I'll, I'll make sure I've logged into the machine right there on the spot. Um, make sure everything's working. So if I was to sit down as them, oh my goodness, it's, this is real. It's happening, the, the location, uh, especially for back office staff. This is uh, very, very key. And then, of course, standardize the orientation process. I know as credit unions, we tend to, tend to be all over the place. Maybe uh, as new hires get in there, you don't have a formal um, checkoff process and there's not notifications as to, you know, they, I got them a key card and somebody else is triggered with tasks. Those are all things we've seen clients address uh, through the, even like the passageway solution. But those are key. You have to have a standardized process in order to grow exponentially. And that's ultimately the goal, right, is to continue to increase member services, but ultimately to grow as an organization and provide that return um, that is necessary. Okay? So with that being said, we've got people plugged in and things you can do right off the bat. Um, I recommend in most groups that you will go through uh, if you don't have an employee intranet, um, and I'm not talking about a Dreamweaver or marketing spin-up or, you know, something that uh, previous IT per built on SharePoint whenever ago, uh, I'm talking about something that end users are able to maintain and go from there. These type projects and tools are vital to the growth and success of millennials. Um, I've seen it time and time again where most uh, teams will go through and use uh, an intranet or a page or cross-functional team, and it's mostly ran by branch operations, branch managers, or middle management right there. Um, they take these projects and they run with them, and then they grow into uh, employee cultures and growth and all those type things. Um, community engagement facilitated within the, within the portal as well. Those are very, very, very vital when it comes to um, pulling these things through. So uh, what I want to think about is, uh, let's see here. Uh, let's do the first one here. I got a poll question for you. Um, and again, this is uh, some quick yes or no's. This is an interactive portion of our presentation. Need your help and feedback because we're always providing feedback back to Q Strategic Services uh, and the community. So if you could answer this question, have you thought about um, the possibility of something like this and the fact that you can get it up and running in sometimes a week, sometimes two weeks, this is not a project, meaning you do not need tons and tons and tons of people. You don't need six months of planning. 
Um, most teams, again, run this uh, very differently through the group. So uh, I'll leave this up. It looks like we were get about half the votes in. You guys are doing a great job. Plug them in uh, from there. We're going to ask a couple other questions just to, again, part of the, the benchmark study to make sure do our groups have everything they need to be successful. Uh, and this is key because as we plug in staff uh, and we decentralize, meaning this isn't a, a project or a product per se that uh, requires programmers and things of that nature. So um, pretty cool. And, and this is the, the results are ultimately showing um, the same thing as well. Most teams do not realize that you can affect all staff with just a little bit of work. Okay, last call. A few seconds here, and we're going to punch up the next question. Um, and we do these. You guys are doing great punching them in really quick. So we're, we're keep rolling here. Um, so the next question here is, um, I'm just going to launch this. So as part of the, the um, feedback, so one, we can launch it quickly. But did you realize that your millennial workforce are the people that can do the updates, you know, or 18 to 35 from there? Um, very interesting, some of the feedback that's come in. So, again, please fill these in as quick as you can. This will help us to identify how the market is perceiving um, projects and co-working, uh, um, cross-functional team projects and things of that nature um, because ultimately this is a huge give back. Uh, component. Just few few seconds here left. Uh, quick yes no's. I don't like to make them real complicated, um, so you can go through and have those. Okay, let's go. Excellent. You guys are doing awesome. All right, and last question here as we start to wrap up, and I'll give you your last takeaway of the day. Um, here uh, is questions. Um, so we're going to get to this here in a second, but if you have questions, this is time to do it. If you don't want someone to give you a buzz and ask you questions, that's okay. Um, but what we found is most teams just want to have a chat, be able to have five to ten minutes uh, to go through and figure out how do we help our credit union be more effective, um, how do we leverage what we already have today versus what are hundreds of other credit unions using today. Uh, and that's, that's part of the key here at Passageways. We actually have a dedicated client conference going on uh, Monday, Tuesday here in uh, Chicago, in the, Chicago, Illinois, uh, where we've got about 125 end users sharing their best practices. Pretty, pretty cool to see all the, the feedback and best practices from, um, you know, uh, you know DATQ, Westby Credit Union, Richmond Federal Credit Union, uh, American Airlines, the list goes on and on and on. Um, you get to see those best practices. So this will help us, Gage, so we can help you all. Uh, last few seconds here, and then I'll get you the final uh, feedback and takeaways for you. I promise you about 30 minutes, and we're going to hit that on the head here. So uh, I'll take this one down, and we'll move on to the last portion here. So within 30 days, millennials should have learned or have an understanding of culture, values, vision, roles. I won't read all these, but these are some great pieces to make sure that employees understand. And it's so easy to miss one of these uh, or multiple of these as we're beginning to work with staff. So uh, it's very, very critical to make sure, one, they know the, the mission, vision, values, and they know, know how what that actually means as opposed to just memorizing the, the two sentences we have on the wall. Uh, it's more than that, and ultimately to be able to find answers, training, safety, development, uh, product information, FAQs, those are all the type pieces that clients will organize within like employee intranets and portals such as passageways, um, but ultimately they need to be able to find answers, uh, and that is, that is the key. And uh, from a respect standpoint, they take on a whole different effect from there. So congratulations, you made it through your first day and you still have your job. Uh, fist pump, we're all on the same page there uh, from from that side. So there's a lot that you can take away from this. Um, this was just simply the screening, onboarding, um, interview portion, and ultimately it's getting them in the door and successful. Uh, in uh, some of our other webinars that we're going to talk about here in a moment, um, we're going to uh, go through and talk about uh, growth and retaining. How do, we, how do we get the most out of them? How do we get them to become the future of recession planning? Um, all those type pieces. We need to make sure that uh, we have this generation plugged in. So the perceived is one, two, three years. But how do we leverage that 
uh, in greater detail and longer from there. So before uh, we wrap things up completely here, uh, I want to turn things back over to Tom with Continuous Strategic Services uh, and let you have, have a few remarks here. Thank you, Matt. Very interesting. I know that a lot of you meet those challenges or, or probably seen those challenges as you do the interviewing and bringing you know, that onboarding of those millennials uh, can be quite challenging. Um, I've got children that are in that age group and I know exactly what you're probably facing. Um, I wanted to share with you, uh, there are, this was the second of four parts um, to this. Uh, part three is going to be on June 16th and part four will be on July 14th and you can find the registration link out on our web page. Uh, we have a, all our free webinars listed including these offered by Passageways. If you go out to cunastrategicservices.com and you go into our Knowledge Center, there will be a link there and there will be free credit union webinars are listed. Um, we will also be sending out uh, emails uh, so please look out for that uh, from CUNA Strategic Services. Usually at the beginning of each month we will send out an email uh, to promote the webinars such as these from Passageways. And uh, I really want to thank Matt and Passageways. Uh, they've been a great partner with uh, CUNA Strategic Services and the credit in, uh, industry. And uh, Matt, I'd like to kind of pass it back over to you uh, for closing comments. Oh, awesome. And I was checking the comments and uh, questions queued here, uh, and you, you would all be correct. There are multiple of you helping us. Uh, part four is July 14th. Tom caught that. So uh, we have the, it will be in July, not June 14th, and there are uh, already people that have started signing up for both. So I encourage you to do so. Uh, if you do have questions about how to engage staff or you're currently you know, struggling uh, to get them plugged in and feeling apart, um, you don't have to wait for both of those. You can give us a buzz, uh, and we will be sending the slides out after this discussion, so you can be able to pull those, uh, you know, interviewing questions. You'll be able to get the best practices, and ultimately, what we're trying to do is help you be successful. Um, that is a core part of our philosophy here at Passageways. Uh, we were founded through the help of Purdue Federal Credit Union, and for uh, almost 10 years, located in their corporate facilities. So I can tell you, having been raised in the credit union. Um, that's very important for us to be able to give back and help you be successful in addition to help solve business needs. So I uh, do want to thank you for all of your time. Uh, we'll make sure the recording and slides are sent out. Um, but with that, uh, enjoy the rest of your day, and we hope to talk to you here in the future. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.